continuing to what I was saying. All right, so he partners up with the guy. Automatically, this guy charges this much. So um, the doctor's not finding these clients. It's Ganga by his name, right? Mm. So by his name, now he ha- he can automatically go from you know charging you know ten thousand, fifteen thousand to a hundred thousand because the the anesthesia costs fifteen thousand. Then he has to get a crew to come in, as, aka his team, mm-hmm. and pay them off. And he has to make money because at the end of the day, he's organizing this. It's down to his name. The, if the artist messes up, it's nobody's gonna call out that artist. Is gonna call out Ganga. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back <clears throat> to Iconic Project. Today, it is sponsored by <clears throat> nothing, <Rainbow>. but <laughs> you got me right here, Romeo Shades, opening it up. That's all my, we need. My boy, Josh, uh, Shade 12, and then Ricky, Ricky Tat with two T's. Um, what, what are we going to talk about today? I'm talking about how you got the balls to open up this shit without Feel me, me? <laughs> <laughs> no I'm just kidding you're, you're gonna you're gonna say why are you taking his job away dog yeah I know I one job just cause I didn't just cause I didn't say I got no okay. yeah, hey say it you gotta say it alright guys <laughs> 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 no but um, what's up man what do we I uh, I think today we decided to talk about the changes in the industry um, as it stands right now how it was from the past mm-hmm. um and then where do we see it going in the future? First off, if you're gonna have a job or not. Right. Um, <laughs> my bad. I was just thinking, um, we haven't did we didn't do this last week or the week prior, I think. We haven't done it like in a month, bro. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I just wanna say what's up, what's new? Oh, oh. Wow. What's new with you? I mean, I got a haircut like last week. <laughs> 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 that's why you're looking all dolled up today, huh? That's what happened. So you're not, not looking like a zombie there anymore. There you go. Yeah. So with you guys, huh? I don't know what's up with you, Josh. Is that the haircut? That's the reason why you've been coming in more cheery now. Yeah, bro. Huh? You know, you look at you look good. You feel good. Yeah. No. Feel like you actually showered. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, nothing with me. I've just been working. Just got recently tattooed by Ricky on my inner thigh. Um. According to everyone else, I would look like I was going to pass out. Uh-huh. I didn't feel like it. I saw it. He did pass out twice. Did he? Did you? I don't think so. Yeah, I think he did. No, but did, you did look uh, like pale or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, that's the first time I, I get tattooed and I didn't eat nothing in the morning. So no, now when I tell clients, you better eat. Now I know. Now you know yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, Shirley over here checking my pulse every like 30 minutes. Make sure I was still alive. How many hours did I tattoo you? Uh, I think we did like eight, eight or ten. No, it was ten. Ten with like a thirty-minute break. You still haven't paid me. I told you later. Jeez, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's go, let's go back to uh, what we we're talking about, like how the shops are really changing right now because we've been noticing in the industry, especially with the artists we're talking to. And we were interviewed that everybody sees it going a different way from what it used to be. So, say early two thousands, right? Twenty years ago, um, shops where you go into walk in shop and you see all the flash in the wall. You know, pick one and boom. you pick one. Yeah, you go get it. Most some people were doing custom, some people weren't. Um, the the customer experience definitely wasn't there. To the you get it or you don't. They didn't really care. Excuse me. Um, but now we're noticing the shift um, over the not past 10 years, especially since tattooing has come out on TV and everything, how these shops, well, first of all, more, more people are getting more tattoos now, right? It's more acceptable. More acceptable. Yeah. You're not a gangbang. Yeah. Gang. California has a law that jobs can't discriminate, so that opened the door for a lot of people to get tattoos, right? Um so I'm seeing these shops actually noticing that too. And there's the people that are going to neglect it and say, nah, fuck that. Let's keep it the same way. There's the people that are going to advance and move on with the new trend that's going on. And the trend we're seeing is that these shops are becoming more modernized now. Mm-hmm. They're they're practicing better customer service skills because people have options now. You know what I mean? 
before people didn't have too many options. Right. Um, <clears throat> so one of the biggest shops, one of the biggest people we've seen right now that has really pushed that modernized shop feel and customer service feel, I believe, is uh, Robert Foe. Mm-hmm. Um, his shop in his first shop. Well, it wasn't. I don't think it's first shop, but one of his shops right there in um, Las Vegas. Vegas. He has um, skin designs. Skin designs. Well, the other one's called skin designs too. No, they're both. They're both skin designs. So skin designs. The original one is in China. I think it's Chinatown or something like that. And uh, Vegas. I could be wrong. I'm not too sure. But it's off the strip. And then the second shop. It's actually on the strip. On that. I think it's like a mall or something. Or with urban, urban something something. <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> it's a shoe store yeah. mixed with the urban with necessities. Urban necessities. There you go. Uh, it's a shoe store mixed with a uh, a tattoo shop mixed with the barber shop mixed with the coffee shop all in one. That's cool, right? Um, I feel like everything's elevating. You know, even the work, even well, yeah. the tattoo shops. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, not just him. You know, we got other well, shops like Ganga and you know Iconic. <laughs> nice. but no, you know what i mean like everything's yeah. you know transitioning well i might get back to ganga right now but i feel like one of the biggest ones um that has because ganga has one or two shops now right two in the same building two in the same building um but robert foe is opening up an empire you know what i mean he has a couple of shops in hawaii he has one in orange county he has one in vegas you know he has different ones that we don't even know about um but the way his the way he's been designing his shops and the way he's been showing it, it has that high elegant look. I know his first shop in Vegas, the one off the strip, that one more went through more through the the Zen kind of feel, where everything's like good Zen mm-hmm. and all that. So everything's he has that. Well, I think it's like a pond or some shit. I don't know. Everything's very <laughs> decorated. Pond. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, 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 like that culture. Yeah, that means, culture. Right. But the the other shops are more uh, high end where. He wants people with money to go in there. It attracts that type of clientele. Exclusive clientele. Exclusive clientele where you know you're going to spend some money. You know you're going to get good quality work. It's like saying you're walking into a Louis Vuitton store. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Kind of thing. And going back to Ganga, um, he's definitely reached that point where now you could say, oh, I got tattooed by Ganga. It's like fucking you bought a Rolls Royce. Mm-hmm. kind of thing you know what i mean not everyone could afford that it's a luxury that a lot of these artists are i, I don't say a lot of them um most artists want to push for to get those type of clients right you know i mean his work speaks for itself too and that's why he gets yeah. those clients yeah i mean and he blew up because he, he he tattooed a lot of famous people i mean and then he ran with it mm-hmm. we've seen people that tattoo other famous people and don't do anything with it so I, I think that helped him out a lot too. Yeah, uh, that's cool. And plus, he has like a good team. Oh yeah, I mean heavy hitters. I mean that's cool because like it makes you almost like want to be where someone out, like Robert Foe or him Ganga reaches out to you because your art's that dope. Yeah, I mean they scout. Mm-hmm. Exactly, they, they it's like scout. That. Like um, if you're a hooper, you know, and you have scouters. It's kind of like that. Yeah, Ganga Ganga brought all his artists from out of the country. You could tell there's some that have probably been here, but. Most of his artists, if you could tell by the videos we've seen, they'll have accents. You know, I mean, even he, he, he has an accent. He comes from a different part. Mm. Well, the reality is there's a lot of great artists all over the world. I mean, not mm. just in the U.S. I mean, most of the most of the artists that are coming out right now on Instagram, they're from other countries, you know, mm-hmm. like Victoria Letty. It's a beautiful lady. <laughs> I don't know about that. Shot, shot has been shot. Shot. Hey, me and yeah, me and Tony keep fighting about it. Subject, subjective, <laughs> I guess. Anyways, um, yeah, there's the ones that I follow. Most of them are out of the country. You know, they're yeah. badass. So, the U.S. I mean, obviously has really dope artists, but I mean, tattooing is all around the world now, and tattooing, the tattoo industry is going to a level where if you don't produce something spectacular and you don't provide a spectacular service or or a shop or a studio that has an attraction then you're just going to be another tattoo studio you know and those are a dime a dozen nowadays we're gonna put romeo outside juggling <laughs> stripping 
<laughs> you got to strip. All right. 100 push-ups an hour. <laughs> no, that's true. Um, I mean, art, yeah, like you said, art is what brings people in too. But it is uh, the clout behind it. it the, the clout. Brand. The brand. The brand. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I guess you could say exclusivity of it. You know what I mean? Like going back to Ganga, um, we don't know exactly how much he per se to charge, but what they're saying about 200,000 or 100,000 per day. Um, I think that's when um, he charges that when he puts them on, un- puts his clients under. So uh, if you guys haven't heard, uh, it's probably going viral right now on, <clears throat> it is going viral on YouTube and TikTok and all that. Um, Ganga Tattoo, he's a, a, a Spanish uh, artist that has a shop here in uh, LA in Hollywood. And he now changed the game and he charges. He has a setup, a system where if you don't want to feel pain, it's called no pain. He even names his Instagram. That new page is called no pain tattoo. And basically, if you have the money, you can avoid the pain and you can get a large piece by him and his crew. So I think that's like one hundred dollars a day is what one hundred thousand dollars a day based on our research on YouTube. One hundred thousand. One hundred thousand dollars a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that includes, you know, fifteen or twenty thousand to put someone under by a doctor. He's not a doctor, so he can't do it. You so, get your teeth done at the same time. Yeah, you get your <laughs> teeth done. So we we're watching that on YouTube and we we're checking it out. And so he has to charge that much because, you know, obviously he's in a team with a bunch of artists and his anesthesiologist crew. I mean, they. Tra- I don't. Obviously, it's not cheap to get put under because you're basically. Uh, well, they estimated about, yeah, like you said, twenty, thirty thousand 30,000 just to put under. And then he estimated from the video we saw, um, said $5,000 per artist, but I doubt it's $5,000 per artist. Yeah, that's what the um, the YouTuber said, right? Yeah. Um, Who knows? It's going to be more. We don't know the details. So sorry, Gongo, for, you know, saying. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, everybody's getting paid. Yeah. You know? And the people that are, and not this is not for regular people. This is for the a certain type of individual that has a certain type of financial backing. They're ballers, I guess you could say. That you know, the few the straight um, bread. Like you know, <laughs> high end rappers. What's his name? <laughs> What's the artist's name? The Moneybag Yoga or Lil Uzi Vert. They all went under. Who is it? Lil Uzi Vert. Lil 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 Uzi. You gotta slow it down for me. Louis Louis Vert. It's Lil 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 Uzi Vert. Yeah. Just haven't heard his music. You heard his music? Nope. You heard his music? Yeah, that was good. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess he paid like close to two hundred thousand. That's the whole trend right now, and that that and blew our the, mind. One of the first ones that did it was uh, Post Malone. Did he? He, yeah. also he went under. It. Yeah, he was one of the first ones to try oh, it. Dope. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what do you guys think about it, though? Would you do it? I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't. Do you it? wouldn't go under I wouldn't to get tatted. One for me, like. All right, so if you guys don't know for anesthesia, you have to sign a waiver because there's a good chance that I don't say if there's a good chance, but there's a chance that you there's might a not small wake up. Chance. Well, we did the research. <laughs> what, what did it say? The research says, hold up. Mm-hmm. It didn't record it. According, record to, according <laughs> to our calculations, no, according saying. to Google, <laughs> according to Google, approximately 34 deaths from anesthesia every year in the United States. And then contributing factors to other deaths because of it is 281 deaths. But how many people put put under every day? I mean, in the year? I don't know. It's probably like a low, low percentage. It's pretty know. safe. But it's there's, pretty, there's a chance. There's of course. Chance there's a chance I walk outside I mean, and a fucking car I runs think, me over. I think that's <laughs> how I, Doesn't mean I'm not going to walk outside. <laughs> Isn't that how Kanye's West mom died? Yeah. Yeah, yeah she I think died because so. of it. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. that risk. But <clears throat> I, the, the, I guess, but. The client, I mean, put your, let's put your, ourselves, I mean, we don't have money like that, but we're talking both perspectives of this, like the client. The client has ridiculous amount of money, right? To to pay. So at that point, you got to you gotta divide, like, okay, is it your life worth just so you don't feel that pain? They probably did the research and they're like, it's a low percentage. They're risk takers. To make that kind of money, you have to be a risk taker. Yeah. And so to get that kind of level of tattooing, because because you paying, can get that level of tattooing without the anesthesia. Yeah, but they're paying not to feel the pain. That's what they're paying for. That's what it is. So you sound like you would do it. Would you do it? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. I don't even have tattoos. <laughs> Why the hell would I get 
pay that much money. I'll just go buy me. I'll put a down payment on something else. Like that guy said, put a down payment on a fucking mansion or something. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it. Are you against it? No, no, no. I mean, I, w- I, I think it's an awesome idea. I look at it in a business way. I don't look at it in a tattoo way. I look at it in a business way. How smart is it is for this kid? I, was ca- I say kid because he's young, right? Uh, I don't want to disrespect him. This young man to say, you know, I wish I can tattoo people with no pain. It'd be better, right? How do you approach that? You know, how do you, you have to first network with some anesthesiologists, doctors, because they are doctors. Well, he tattooed them. That's how he knows them. Oh, that's what it is? Yeah. Okay. So they probably talked and, and said, hey, up. you know, we can do this. Yeah. And then for him to have the balls to say, yeah, let's do it. Because, I mean, it's pretty, according to the video we saw, dude, the dude is tied up. You saw they, 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 Put him in like a cushion. Yeah, even his legs. I even think his that's legs. where his pressure to like read the his uh, mm-hmm. vital vitals. The vitals. Yeah. Oh, okay. All around. Yeah. So that the anesthesia doesn't go through your heart, huh? Yeah. Something I don't like know that. how it works. To be yeah, honest. we don't know anything about that, but it's a big process. You know, it's not just all right. Put you under and then lay down here and then we put you under. You're like, we in could a not surgery, do it. Surgic, surgical room. Surgical room. No, yeah. yeah. Not only that, you can't breathe by yourself. You need to, you yeah. know, machine. Help. So, from, yeah. See, that's so that starts building up that whole thing again, like. Is it worth it? Is it worth yeah. it? Yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, it's everybody's different, you know? But I look at it in the business way. I continue to what I was saying. All right. So he partners up with the guy. Automatically, this guy charges this much. So um, the doctor's not finding these clients. It's Ganga by his name, right? Mm-hmm. So by his name, now he ha- he can automatically go from, you know, charging, you know, 10000 15000 to 100000 because the... The anesthesia costs fifteen thousand. Then he has to get a crew to come in, as aka his team, mm-hmm. and pay them off. And he has to make money because at the end of the day, he's organizing this. It's down to his name. The, if the artist messes up, it's nobody's gonna call out that artist. Gonna call out Ganga. Yeah, you know. I mean, he already selected that team, so I mean, there's no way like. Yeah, it seems like them. they're doing yeah. pretty good. I mean, but it goes back to like the artist now. Um, you can't move the person. The person is laying down completely wired up to machines. Yeah, as an artist, tattooing. That sucks. That would be, that would, that's tough. I give respect to those artists that Shit, are tattooing my, right there. My back hurt yesterday just tattooing that dude on the chest. And then you're limited to eight hours. So you yeah. have to, yeah, you see some of them standing. So obviously they probably tag team like, all right, I'll take, I'm going to take a break. You're next, you know? Well, I think that's because you can't tattoo the same area as the other artists because then you're moving the skin. Remember we tried that too? Mm-hmm. And we had to separate, like, so we couldn't be next to each other. We had to be across from each other. Yeah, they figured it out. But <clears throat> so, it, it must be hard, especially if you're doing it. Let's say he's laying down, looking up like that guy did. Um, and then you're doing it on the ribs. You can't, like, move his arm so I can get under there, you know. You have to do what you can within that area, and you're just bending. It's hard. That's a lot of pressure, man. Respect to Ganga and his crew for, yeah, for doing it. it. They did a good job, you know. Yeah. Some of those uh, tat. The tattoos they've done, they're fucking badass. And a lot of clients, sometimes they realize like, oh, I like going to this guy because it all heals the same. And that's why I want my whole sleeve. So imagine that you have different artists with different styles. I wonder if they're all on the same page as tones and stuff like that. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what the artists get together. And um, so I talked to another artist at, at the conventions because they were doing a group one, remember? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, we, we sit down. We talk about, okay, we're going to use the same drop system, obviously. And then... um. They they sit down and they plan it out beforehand. Okay, since you're good at line work, you're gonna right. deal, you're gonna attack this. You're good at really soft shading, you're gonna attack this, and then it goes from there and there. So everybody has their own job in their own section to do it. It's nuts. <clears throat> it's cool though. I I don't disagree with it. I think it's a uh, it's already happening, so mm-hmm. might as well you know. I guess I mean it's not it. gonna stop. I think the only reason it'll stop if I mean God forbid someone dies from it. You know, yeah, and that's a big chance. And that's what we we're talking about earlier. Like if someone does die from it, um, there's a good chance now that the industries will be attacked from it. You know what I mean? So that might change it for everyone. What's going on with uh, in Europe where they're trying to change the pigments of the colors. So now we they can get um, certain colors. Oh, what? yeah. So there's certain tattoo colors that they're not allowed to get over there or they're trying to cancel them. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about that moving it over here as well in the United States. Um, so it's like little things like that like one thing things, can just yeah. ruin everything once, once one thing happens then it becomes another thing especially because I felt like well I don't know if, 
fucking we talked this with Richie. Um, this industry was so low key before, where the government didn't have so much um, involved into it, right, or so much say into it. But now they see how much money comes out of this industry, and obviously they want their cut. So regulations are coming. So it's almost like any excuse they can find. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Any excuse they're gonna find to fucking oh, um, to put more regulations. We're saying now we're going to have to go like barbershops, like where you have to go to school for a fucking two years and pay all that money to the state just to do your job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I don't think every, I mean, you don't, I don't think a lot of regular tattoo shops are going to be doing this. No, obviously not. It's going to be just a small segment of the population of the owners that are going to be able to financially to set this up and do it. Like, but it is a possibility though. Cause what if you happen to tattoo a guy yeah. That does that, and you're like, let's just do it. Just close out the shop for one day. You got a guy right now. You know that. And it doesn't, <laughs> have, to be, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a big piece. I mean, you know, it's it going to happen. Some people are going to take I, the risk. And, mm. and I mean, I don't know how you get access to anesthesia, but, you know, there's not a lot of stuff. Uh, you can not a, stuff anywhere. Not a, there's not a lot of <laughs> I know a guy. To take that risk. I know a guy who knows a guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anybody. I mean, anyway. that's what they said about getting the eyeball tattoos, and then fucking everybody started trying to do it yeah. until fucking someone went blind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's always going to be people that are So gonna, they're going to be mimicking it. And that's what I'm saying. It's not going to change. It's not going to stop, but it's going to change things. Yeah. I, I don't know. I see it in a positive way. I think it's going to bring more clout to the industry. And therefore, you know, like Ganga's. So do you ever think it's going to be affordable to an average person? No. No. I mean, why? So you're saying like, like if it comes down to like a thousand, two thousand dollars? Yeah, like I mean, before plastic surgery was so expensive before, and it mm-hmm. went down to now where well, anyone could get it. I mean, if technology becomes where you don't need that much uh, of a setup, I get elaborate setup mm. where you know um, we can have an in-house anesthesiologist chilling, and they just like zaps you in that area, and and you're numb for mm-hmm. fucking eight hours, then you lose that arm. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely we'll definitely See, hire somebody. And so. then it goes back to the whole like I don't uh, think it's gonna happen for like to become like normally in the in the tattoo studio, it won't be for till you won't see that kind of change in like 15, 20 years, dude. And then how do you not damage the skin so much when you're working at like that? You know? Well, I mean they're professionals, you know. No, but I mean still even um because they still bleed. Yeah, you know? they're just not feeling the pain. The blood is still going up there, you know, but just there, what is, is eliminated, what I think is eliminated is the actual pain of the needle going into the skin. So there's still bleeding involved, you know, imagine waking up the next day to it's fucking, like, uh, how would it be? I mean, if I can, Cause you know, I've used client, I've used a uh, numbing cream on clients that oh. they bring. I'm not going to say which brand because we never, we never get sponsored. No, just kidding. <laughs> and uh, we, I use it throughout the whole st- Thing and you know for eight hours maybe three or four hours have been numb throughout that time, but then the next day their their hand is really swollen you know yeah. and it's painful to them, whereas people that don't use numbing cream uh, they're fine with it you know so yeah. who's to say how I feel like you get the whole pain at once at that point they're probably taking morphine or something huh uh, I don't know um, yeah I wouldn't do yeah, it yeah it's like a point zero zero one percent of population that can afford this dude. You know, like CEOs, like the guy that was getting, I think he's a, is Eric something. He's a, he owns like a, a big investment group mm-hmm. business. So I'm interested to see how, um, going back to how Robert Fowler would take this, like, would he jump into it if he had the chance or not? Because he comes from a big tattoo background from like, especially the nineties where, mm. you know, so he has, he's he very heavily cultural. But he's very business minded, you he's know. A, he's open minded. Maybe that's in this. <clears throat> but maybe that's in his uh, future. But he's yeah. just not saying it, you know. What, is, that, oh, go ahead. what do you think about like? Because you guys are big on experience. Like, what if um, you, when it does become more popular and your favorite rapper comes in, and he only wants arms. He never wants something else, you know. And then you can't even chop it up with him, you know, because he's he's asleep. So like, and you guys are big on experience, you know. You just can't can't talk to your client well, you can't I mean, you know i guess that's a whole different experience though, at that point it's just yeah. for the, you know yeah that that point you're just the machine you get to work yeah they don't want to talk to you no i think the experience <laughs> is having you, you have pain. to have a 
a pre meeting with him, you know what I mean, and chop it up with him and yeah. and before that, I mean, you know, just just come in and say, hey, where do I lay down? <laughs> oh, right here, and that's it. You have to like, you have to get to know him, and you know, there's that prior. That's part well, of that. from the way they're talking about in the video, they just they go back through emails. Yeah, well, like I said, I don't we don't do yeah. it, but I would think there's there's some type. But the people that are paying this, they don't they don't care about an experience, man. Mm-hmm. They, they just want their. They tat. want that as big as possible with no pain, you know. And how can you have an experience off of that? But it's like a small group, so obviously it's not something we we offer or will offer in the in the near future. But who knows in the future? But um, I don't know. Would you t- would you Pack tattoo your bags, somebody? Bro, you're going to school. <laughs> <laughs> you're going would you to tattoo for somebody it. under? Would you get nervous? I would get nervous. I think be, it'd be stre- not stressful, kind of, because you don't have to worry about them like. Uh, uh, you could just do your thing uh, I don't know Don't they move sometimes? It's almost like <laughs> Yeah I don't know but It's almost like you're drawing Like a Imagine drawing tattoo And then you're just like Because <laughs> <laughs> I've that. heard those stories Where some people Are under But they're not All the way under Ooh, You know what I mean? They're yeah. still kind of awake Yeah That would suck uh, you're like, yeah, bro. I felt the whole thing. <laughs> I need, I need a refund or something. Yeah, imagine for the fucking like <laughs> when people are getting surgeries and they wake up in the middle of it, fuck that, uh, with your chest open and shit. I wonder if that's like in mm, the. But I think they're so put under that if they see like they're waking it up, they right. I'm yeah. I'm sure that's why they. That's they, that's why juice they juice them up again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Bye bye, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> it's not time yet. We're in the nose. <laughs> It's crazy, but that's trending right now, you know, and everybody has their say so on it. And it's and I think that's why it's it's trending and it's it's being like it sounds crazy because it's new. I had I remember I will say that I had I don't remember where I heard this, but like a year and a half ago, I would say it like, man, watch one day. Remember, I would say mm. one day artists are going to be you said robots. Gonna be, Huh? You said robot. Well, I said that one, too. Hold on. Don't, don't blow that. <laughs> one. But I said one day people are going to be put under. Um, <clears throat> anesthesia and they're gonna get tatted and i remember like people would tell me like or some of the artists would say like no that's not happening i'm like i heard it's happening they're pay- paying i don't know where i heard this but this is before ganga was doing it because there's others doing it in spain there's people mm-hmm. that are doing it um but the next one that i was saying is watch it, this is coming later on you're gonna go into a tattoo shop and there might be a couple artists there but there's just gonna be tech technicians there and you're gonna be like all right what do you want to get I want to. I want to get a skull. All right, cool. Do you have the image? No. Okay, let me make it for you. Okay. Do you like this? Yeah. Where do you want it? All right. I don't want it in my inner form. Cool. Sit down on chair number four. You know. <laughs> um. Sit down right there, and I'll warm up the machine for you. Warm and up. then the fucking there's gonna be a, a machine I gotta like oil, this. I gotta oil it up real quick. Yeah. I lube it up. There's gonna be a hand all you know like in the dentist, but thicker with with the needle shit here and the inks, and then it's gonna be. They're going to strap you. It's going to be like a And then it's just going to be like. You're going to be done in fucking less than 10 minutes. What How do you? What about needle depth? You know, what if it goes too deep? Blowouts. They don't know that. They will know that. It's called sensors. There's going to be a laser sensor right there. Bro, they do surgery with arms already. Damn. Like, we're not. We can't. We can't understand this because we don't know the technology. But. There's technology out there that can do this. All right, let's go back to it. Watch. You let a robot hand tattoo you? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's going to be like those for like somebody wants a fucking cathedral architecture where it's all perfect, right? Or, and yeah, it's right like, here. Or, it's like the lines are so fucking perfect. Like, or geometric. Artists can't like, get that shit yeah. down exactly like that. Yeah, they can. I fuck no. It. I see no, that. Fuck no. I see it. That's BS. One pass line. Who'd you see it? Who's done it? I'll call it um, out. Um, What's his name? Oh, um, you seen it in person? Yeah. Cool. Where what's that? The Disney fucking tower? You know how I saw those fucking uh-huh. lines? Fucking everybody in Orlando does those shit. The um, who did I go to that seminar with? Forgot. Owen. Oh, and Owen. He, he does that shit a lot. And they're straight, and they're perfectly straight. straight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Check out his him. work. All right, respect, dog. But you, you and all those people that do geometrical too. But anyways, here I'm saying it right now. It's on on the podcast. Watch from ten or fifteen years from now. There's gonna be fucking arms, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna own a shop that I'm gonna be like, all right, go to number fucking six. He's not busy right now. <laughs> the other one is like, we're lubing it up, <laughs> and I'll send you in, and we're gonna just charge like a little bit. Oh, you want a custom one? Okay, you come to me. Let's go in the back. But meanwhile, the other ones are they're coming, and people are gonna be like, no. I mean, do you see what's going on in New York now what? with the uh, temporary ink? 
No. So there, there's a whole shop that opened up in New York that basically you go in there and you have the same tattoo experience we have right here, right? And the same setup, the same everything, except the ink is different. It's, uh, the pigments are a lot smaller. So the ink actually disappears within a year. So for people that want to experience a tattoo, but they don't know what they want to get, mm -hmm. they're indecisive. They go there, they get a tattoo, and then it goes away after a year. Dang. But you still go through the same pain, same thing, everything. Yeah. It's just. No. Because would you do you, that? I wouldn't do that, bro. No. I mean, because I would be, I would tattoo it. Sorry. I would tattoo it. I'll give it. you $3,000 if you get my name on top of your eye. <laughs> <laughs> Pay the, daddy. pay the guy pay off daddy. it's not even the same yeah. freaking ink it's like permanent and there's nah, gonna be bro. people that do that and there's like, people i mean if they open the whole there's, shop to do that for everything bro yeah there's people that want there's it people yeah. for everything it's like a henna people will try it henna but mm -hmm. oh yeah nah, but henna i heard is I don't, I don't know what henna is but i think it's like it chemically burns you know i don't know dude i thought you just draw it on no oh, it's like a chemical that burns it onto you but yeah it just it goes to show that there's waves for everything and I, things would be more popular that anesthesia thing. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one service that people could add or are going to be adding on being eventually in the future, but we're going back to how the shops have changed a lot too. Um, if you go to any new shop now, like you can see it's, it's more clean. There's not a lot of things on the walls If there is, there's, there's not like, Fucking 10 different frames that don't match each other and fucking, you know, on the wall. But LED strips everywhere um, and everything's more organized. And again, it goes back to them trying to get that high end clientele or that high end experience to those clients. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you get tattooed by some well known guy, you know, you're going to be like, I got this here. I got this, you know, by. What's his face? At that one place. Where? <laughs> I'm just making oh, it up. Like, yeah. He's doing a scenario. When? Yeah, I'm doing a scenario. <laughs> Me? When? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to want to show it off. Yeah. And you, like you, you're telling me, people always ask you, like, how much is that? You know? How much is that? Well, you're going to be like, fuck yeah, I paid 200000 for this. Right. You know? Yeah. It's almost like, like you said, it's like having jewelry. It's like having jewelry. Jewelry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jewelry. And I, I feel like people Dark, are Dark. 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 people now are seeing, Dead especially because of because uh, <laughs> of social media, they're seeing more of the quality. You know what I mean? So we're we're getting a lot less people just saying, "Oh, I just want it like that." To where they're actually that's why a lot of first timers right now want big pieces. Yeah, and they're because that's all you see on Instagram. Mm. They're more selective now. They know what they want. Be and not like when you go to someone's house and just say, "Fuck it." Right, and you're starting you to realize those yeah. people. You still realize what's people, good work and what's yeah. not. Because to us, we can see it like, oh, yeah, but some some clients well, out I think, there. I think you started off the podcast saying the tradition of um, of tattooing was before. It was just whatever was on the walls. But I think a lot had to do with tattooing started without artists. You know, tattooers were just like tattooers. They just did the tattooing. They They didn't have most, from what I understand, most of the background. Most of the artists back then, they weren't art. They didn't have a um, a heavy artistic uh, background. Yeah, it was, a, it was a trade job. Yeah, it was a trade job. So now the difference is artists are leaving the fine arts, or they're coming out with fine arts. And you know who started changing that? Um, what was that shirt that you used to wear before? Ed Hardy. Ed Hardy. Ed Hardy was one of the first people to start bringing that artistic into it because he's one of the first people to have that custom made shop in San Francisco where, you know, he didn't really advertise it. He just, he had his clients already and they knew what they want and he just, and then he'll create it and put it on there. Where so before it wasn't like that? Before he was one of the first ones to do that. That's almost an and analogy to saying once the robot hand comes in. <laughs> he goes with the robot hand. The, that robot hand's coming, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you. To, what, are, what are we, 22? And 2030. Nah, we'll we're going to have fucking 2030, we're going to be seeing <laughs> robot hands. I'm going to call them. R1, R2, R3, or tat, tat 1, Tat 2, Tat 3. Which one do you guys want? Tat 3 is a beast. He has a heavy hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're just going to be walking around, checking on the inks. All right, yeah, this one's good. So you're going to be fixing the machines, bro. You're going to be fixing machines, dog. Cleaning it. The apprentice, bro, is going to be cleaning it, changing the bolts. Well, who's going to push the button? <laughs> That's going to be you. 
<laughs> Who's gonna be dropping the stations, bro? <laughs> then you have a bougie arm. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Leave it alone. I like my setup like this. <laughs> Romeo, please stay back. <laughs> That's coming, bro. I'm telling you guys, it's it's the wave of the future. I don't know. You know. But yeah, that's crazy, man. Um, and then tattoo shops overall, like, you have to, you have to do something different. Whether it's bringing in amazing artists, which is you know that's the, that's one of the big keys. You have to have good work or have an amazing like experience. We always go back to saying that we you know we pride ourselves in having a a good ex- a great experience, a five star experience because. That's what gives us the edge, you know. Um, mm-hmm. We're not well-known artists. Uh, we, relative compared to what you see on Instagram, you know, we we do really good work, but um, we don't have that big, big community. Uh, only because you know, I've only been, it in, the, it is. Only been in the community for three years. So, um, so what we can, what well, the edge we can control is giving people that five-star service that they feel like, you know what, my money was well worth it and more, you know? And so combined with that and then having, you know, inject, like a lot of shops are injecting easily guys, easily minimum $300,000 into setting up a shop right now to one that, you know, is, is like high level, you know, Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of money, man. Three hundred thousand. That's a. It's more than McDonald's. That's a big business, you know. <laughs> so it's not like not anymore. Just get twenty thousand dollars and put a floor in and all that. Um, we didn't spend that much money. Obviously, we didn't. But uh, we made, we made, uh, we made this studio, um, just you know, clean and inviting, and modern. There's a lot of things we could have done to spend more money to make it more flashy. I guess we could say, right? Mm. But uh, we're not at that level yet, you know. Maybe Iconic Three or Three Point Oh, whatever. That'll be the one where we really inject that money in there, you know. Um, but that's the wave of the future, man. If you want to stand out in the, in this game, you have to spend that money. I forget, who said that on YouTube. We have a strip pole that goes down. I think Robert Fole said that. <laughs> what was that? Well, they were gonna have a strip pole that goes down with the plan. <laughs> I don't know. See the single man talking? Bro, we were just like, <laughs> we were like I ain't saying Stop shit. Me <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he says that when he's not single, huh? Hey. hey, hey. Uh. We'll see. I'm going I'm I'm to put this conversation right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clip it. <laughs> what else? What else are you guys seeing that's pretty crazy right now? Um, TikTok you game? You know what we think? I, I think this industry needs? A healthier energy drink for tattoo artists. Yeah. <laughs> you see all those memes going around like, oh, you see the tattoo artist breakfast? Yeah. And yeah. it's like a energy drink. That'd be a good, that would be a real good invention right there. Yeah. So we're doing that next. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were onto something with the Celsius until that article came out about giving people cancer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That backfired real quick. <laughs> bro, ever since then, you guys haven't bought any, bro. <laughs> <laughs> really? I didn't even know you didn't that. Hear about that. No, no, we're talking about. I remember you brought it up too. Yeah, we drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, I think coffee's the. I think so. Also, lifestyles for um, artists are changing too, though. I mean, health wise now. Yeah. Where more, we're seeing more people posting about like working out. You know, work before tattooing. We're talking about healthier options for tattoo artists. Where, because all we do down, if you think about it, like. We sleep for how many hours? Eight hours? And then we sit for 12 hours. You do 12 hours? Well, I we're do, sitting here. I do six, day. seven. <laughs> no, but including like, you know, stuff. No, it's a setup and, and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's so, a sedentary job, you know? We yeah. don't, we're not too active. Lifestyle. It's not even Somebody a that's promoting that heavy right now is uh, Andy Foe, the brother of Robert Foe. Oh, yeah. He's pushing that really hard. Because of Bedros. Huh? Because of Bedros. Yeah, Petros. he's pushing um, where tattooers, uh, he's even teaching those guys. He's even doing like a mastermind, how to teach mastermind, people how to yeah. be like physically, mentally, and mentally. Uh, dude's a beast. He, do, he runs marathons and dips mm-hmm. in baths. You seen his new shop? Oh. No, see, he's going to. Uh, uptown? Right, he's going to push it too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking, he got his brother a big ass it. fucking warehouse. 
Oh yeah, like massive. Dude, that would be dope. Like a that tattoo looks like shop a, with my bad. Like tattoo shop with a gym. You know, because everyone's doing coffee shops and stuff. Yeah. But like a gym. You know, kind of like a kind of like. Fuck. Hey, you're know. not single no more, bro. <laughs> Chill. Wait, what do <laughs> what I have to do, bro? <laughs> You'll be over here tattooing. But see, but like, see look, hey. at, look at the mentality. <laughs> like the mentality is like if if somebody opens a regular tattoo shop around the around the corner from here, right? And we hear about it, we're and we're like, oh, somebody opened up a tattoo shop. Wow, cool, yeah. cool, yeah. But if we hear, oh man, did you hear that new shop that's being built over there with the water slide? It has and a shit. water slide. <laughs> it has fucking a jungle gym in there, or what do you call them? Fucking gym. No, the ball pin. The ball pins. It has a. Oh, the golf course. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. A golf course in there. Like. No, but I get what you knows? mean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. an attraction now. Mm-hmm. Now the game has stepped up where if you really want to stand out, you have to do something elaborate like that. Like like a coffee shop next to it or a, a brewery. I mean, obviously, a fucking Barber alcohol shop, and that. tattoos, you can't blend in. But I was actually thinking about that. I was exactly. thinking we could do a speakeasy. You know, speakeasy. A hidden go, bar. We go through a fridge. Yeah. Though. So, like for the next shop, when we have the warehouse, we'll have like a back room, right, with the refrigerator door, and then you have to give the secret knock that we only give to clients, Ooh. and then we have a, a guy in the back. He opens a little slot, and he's like, "What's the password?" <laughs> <laughs> been watching too many movies. <laughs> so I'll just steal your idea. You get yeah. <laughs> Hey, ideas are just ideas, so you do execution, right? Right, Carlos? Hey, that's dope, though. That yeah, right. Sick. And yeah. then we have just have a hidden bar in the back, and then yeah. There you go. Or it'll be like the entrance right here. That yeah, way. and you just move like one of those notches. Yeah. Like that, like. <laughs> we That's should do that here, bro. Is? Let's take speak all this, the hidden bar. Take everything um, from the back out and let's just do it back there, bro. There used to be a, one in San Diego. I don't know if it's still there where they, you go through a restaurant and then the, you tell the lady you want to order this, whatever. And she takes you to the back to the refrigerator and then you go through an underground tunnel and then you go to the bar. Yeah. That's the whole experience. It's dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. I think somebody's gonna come out with one like one of those um you know, gen, like uh, hipster ones, what? where they do like meditation in the back, you know, mm-hmm. where you go into before you start tattooing, they'll probably put you in a meditation corner. Bro, we're gonna find Carlos yeah. there. <laughs> Carlos is like itching right now. Like really? I can oh go my do god, that? they're doing stretching. <laughs> yeah, I can. I want to work there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they put all those fucking incense and stuff but yeah that's the next wave has to have like an attraction because hmm. well the attraction for one of them that started way before was all girl shop have you noticed that i know all girl shop was one of the first attractions that started and then from there i think ended up going to um i think the next one i heard after that was i shines the coffee shop thing yeah because now there's tattoo shops that are putting like marble everywhere mm-hmm. you know and I'm pretty sure those those guys are not doing fifty dollar tattoos, you know, or nah. hundred dollar minimums. They're 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 an exclusive. They're looking for that exclusive clientele. But in mm. order to get to do all that stuff, your art has to like, yeah, you dope, right? Mm. I mean, not would all you? The time. That's dope is subjective. Some people would be like, you know, there's there's gonna be shops out there right now that that there's artists there and they're and they're doing work that's premium. They're charging a premium rate. But to others that want to get tattooed, they don't value that as mm-hmm. a premium, right? You know what I'm saying? So it, it's all just branding, I guess. Again, I guess it's creating your, your. Um, I mean, what's a good brand that fucking everybody seeks out to get? Like a Supreme. Like a Supreme. You know what I mean? They're going to say, oh, I got a Supreme tattoo. I got, yeah. I got a Romeo tattoo. You know? Right. Um. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's weird. But, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm not against it, any of it. It's exciting. It's exciting to see, man, because, like, it's going to... Dude, there's going to be... There's going to be ones that are going to do... There's going to be tattoo shops that are going to charge, like, buy my NFT and you get a tattoo. Mm. Think about that. I don't know. NFT's in the trash right now, so... (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, from what I understand... The value of NFTs is in the trash, but the technology behind uh-huh. it, the smart contracts, that's going to stay forever. But um, <clears throat> don't shit, quote me on I lost that. my idea. I was going to say something. It's been a lie. You were talking about NFTs. Huh? NFTs. No, I was going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you I forgot. It's spaced out. 
People are accepting crypto too as payments for payments. That's weird, huh? It's not weird. It's new. It's new. Yeah. Because the later on, it's gonna happen like that. But yeah, I mean, I think later on, dude, um, shops are gonna be offering NFTs. And if you guys don't know what NFTs are, you Google it. It's like non fungible fungible oh. tokens. Sorry to cut you off, Phil. That's yeah, what I was on I was a talking good about. one right now. Um, how, what do you think that's gonna do to the to? Um, is there gonna be more competition for artists or less competition for artists being high end? Everyone trying to go in high end. Everybody going. Um, you know what? Because I don't think a lot of shops are trying to go high end. To be honest, like well, I, I do you think a lot, a lot of, of people are gonna get left behind to the point where like, um, you know how everyone's gonna try to move this way, move this way, right? And there's gonna be people that are not gonna want to do it. Um, do you think there's gonna be a lot of artists that are just gonna get left behind and like, you know, they have no work or they're stuck doing those fifty dollar tattoos? I think it. I think that's gonna separate. I think going that route is gonna separate the artists that are really ambitious and the artists that are complacent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, the the premium exclusive category is only for a smaller sub group of of people. People, and there's always gonna be a general population that wants just th- whatever they can afford. Mm-hmm. You know. The exclusive part, now those people are competing for those exclusive clients. So that exclusive client, if I came up on $10 million right now and then I and then I did like tattoos and I did want to go and get a tattoo. Now those shops are going to, they're going to um, try to get my attention and mm-hmm. so I can go to a shop, right? So uh, so the, the people that are in that wealth group or wealth category, it's, they're always going to be a smaller than the population. So there's not going to be, so artists are not going to be out of work. You know, there's always going to be a, so do you think majority. it's also going to change to the point where <clears throat> right now, everybody's just trying to get tattooed. Yeah. Right. They don't, they don't care what it a is. A lot of people. Yeah. They just want tattoos because they see other people have tattoos. Trending, but yeah. do you think it's going to go to where everybody's going to now it's going to switch to everybody just wants good tattoos? No. Where, um, again, it goes back to the brand. I want, this brand of tattoo yeah i don't think Mommy. so no, no. Be, a, i think it would be the same as cars yeah i was what? gonna i was gonna do an analogy of cars. so everybody's gonna get a honda oh uh, because because I mean, you can uh, get it yeah. Yeah. yeah but everyone wants that lambo i mean not everyone but I can't a lot of people would like a nice car yeah. we tried <laughs> <laughs> we tried <laughs> i'm like fuck this <laughs> she was smaller than this where'd i put my backpack dog <laughs> <laughs> fuck this you, you winning one huh you're winning one would i want one no you win in one I, s- I think I sat in Yeah, we, you sat in it. Yeah. What was it? it oh, was the white one? Your client, yeah. Yeah, I was like, hell uh, no, bro. <laughs> that like, shit is like, if I, s- I barely nudged in there, and then I was like, how the fuck do I get out? I <laughs> looked at it, and I was like, that shit's going to hurt my back just going in They're there. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good analogy you said about the cars. It's like, everybody aspires to have a luxury car, whether it's a Lambo or a Bentley or a, even a Mercedes. Most know? people, yeah, yeah. Most people mm-hmm. want Mercedes. But most people can't afford Mercedes. So, you know... Does that mean people are not driving cars anymore? No, they're going to settle for a Honda. Or even a nicer car than a Honda. There's still Kia. stuff that's There's in still range. in between. Yeah. And that's the point. There's always going to be categor- business for mm-hmm. every category. Mm-hmm. So as a shop owner, I think you have to decide, or as an artist, let's just go down to an artist. If you're an artist, you got to decide where you want to get your clientele from. If you yeah. want to get regular, uh, Small tat. If you want to do regular small tattoos, then you're gonna be busy forever. Right. You know, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be a Honda. You're gonna be a Honda. What would you be, bro? I'll be a, <laughs> a no. <laughs> I'll be a, a lifted you, Chevy <laughs> truck <laughs> on some twenty fours, and it goes brum <laughs> brum. That's what, what I would dog? be. Huh? What are you? What kind of? Oh, pinche. He's a Jeep Miata. <laughs> you know the Suzukis? <laughs> They're rare. But you'll see one one in a kind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. Where are you going to be, dog? Shit, right? Huh? I'm a fucking I'm a 2014 Scion FRS, bro. Mm. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> basic, bro. Basic model. I basic? do basic tats right now. No, but yeah, that's, you know. That's true, it's, though. It's, I like how you put it like that. Yeah, it's just an example. I mean, but we all want to strive to get to that next level. I saw sure. uh, there's, a, there's an article or um on TV, I think uh, they were interviewing uh, on the Spanish channel. Hmm. They were interviewing, I think, uh, yeah, uh, Jose CD or something, yeah, or one of those guys. It was uh, it might have been um, the dude from New York. 
Darwin? No, no, actually, it wasn't even one of those famous guys. Uh, it was when he was just talking about tattoos. They did a segment on tattoos, and they show the percentage of how many people are are tattooed in each country. And the U.S. you would think would be number one, and it's mm-hmm. not. It's, they're like number six. Um, France has the most. They're like 40% of their population is tattooed. Um, Germany, Spain, Spain, and... Uh, believe it or not, um, Australia mm-hmm. and Argentina. And then it's the U.S. The U.S. is like 30% of the population is tattooed. Yeah. 30%, dude, that's one out of three people have a tattoo. That's a lot of people. So there's still room to grow. You know what I'm saying? So tattoos are never going to die out. And it's all about where do you want to fit yourself, you know? I don't know, man. The way this country's going, where I think they're gonna ban tattoos. No, they don't never. They're, they're already banning shit. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like if they that's like it, doomsday, yeah. bro. If they ban it, we'll be going backwards, though. You know, when yeah. it's like, hey, I mean, they said they were gonna overturn whatever that, but they overturned that. Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade after fifty years. Wait, what? But bro? that's politics. Yeah. You know, there's not yeah. enough money in in uh, tattooing for them to be manipulating te- politicals. Rovers, that's a whole different story. I have another can of worms right there. <laughs> but yeah, you just, as an artist, you got to decide where do you want to get your clientele? You know, do you want to keep doing walk-ins or do you, are you, or do you want to aspire to doing, um, uh, Romeo shades, custom tattoos? Right. Yeah. The second one. Second one. Right. Mm-hmm. So how do you do so that? So now you're going to be selling Romeo shades, custom tattoos instead of just the random infinity signs. Mm-hmm. But, you know I mean? but you have to put in that work to, you know, you have to do those, you know? Um, I don't know. What do you want to do? Do you want to do you want to be keep doing um, butterflies, butterflies and line work flowers? Uh, they're willing to pay whatever I'm asking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to. I want five thousand do... dollars a day. <laughs> Fácil. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want to do stuff that's just you know people come to me like where other artists are talking about me like oh you see the work that he's doing and they reach out to me and they tell me like. Hey man, why do you do this, this? And I'm gonna get back to you, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna DM, I'm gonna DM you back, bro. I'm gonna, I don't care how many followers I have. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna show some love back. But no, I'm. I'm Tell us how you really feel, bro. No, I'm, I'm you you want to shout him out real quick no, and no, let no, him know, no, like, no. like message me, fucker. <laughs> no, but, no, for sure, I'm aspiring to be. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> I'm aspiring to have some dope work where you know my art just speaks for itself, and I just you know. So you care about the artist. The artist community approving your work, right? Kind of like artists, yeah, appreciating tech, your work, yeah, and tech, more than yeah. collectors, both, both. Mm-hmm. I mean, most likely, once you you impress an art, the artistic community, the collectors that you're you're aspiring to get, you know, also see that quality. Do you care? That's a good thing you brought up. Do you do you care if other artists don't like your work or they do? Um. I don't, and I do. Elaborate. If, like, if they're talking shit about it, fuck you, all right? Mm-hmm. But if they're honestly giving me a critique on how to better myself, because at the end of the day, I do care more about me bettering my craft for myself, you know what I mean, and for the clients I'm well, let me ask, the more Maybe the question I should ask is, is it important for you, for other, for you to be um, uh, approved by other artists, I guess? Not approved, but like... What's the word I'm trying to say? Like, like that they admire your work? Is that important to you? Mm. Like a Alan Padilla. A very, Shout out to Alan Padilla. What's up, fool? Because <laughs> as subject, art is subjective, you know? And not everybody's going to like everything they see. But if it's like an artist that I I, uh, I like and I started, um, started uh, going towards that style of tattooing, because of them, and if they gave me a critique about it and it's good, yeah, hell yeah, I like it. Who's your top five artists you like? Oh, that's hard right now. There's a lot. I mean, Victoria well, for sure. Victoria? <laughs> yeah, Victoria for what sure. What else? Who else? Off uh, the bat, I mean, you can't uh, name five of them? I like Alan's work. Well, okay, so these are people that I just normally go back to, and I I look at some of their work, and I, okay, how do they do this? How do they do this? And I try to, like, analyze their whole work. So it'd be Victoria, Alan... Um, Alan Padilla, Alan Padilla, Jose, Victoria Letty, Jose CD, um, Jose CD. What's it called? Oh, fuck. What's his name? 
fuck was his name? Um, <laughs> Daniel Rocha. Daniel Rocha. And I don't know his. You you showed him to me. I forgot his name. Um, David Vega. No fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh, that's yours. Yeah, that's yours. Yeah, that's, that's it. I don't that's need to. You don't got no other. Fuck forward? no, the rest are crap. <laughs> no, it's a. <laughs> I, I think it was like Thomas or some shit like that. Oh, uh, the one that Tony likes, Th- Thomas. Uh, no, you showed me the wins. The, that he does the wind breaks and how he fades out away from it. He's a European dude. Oh, Gregory Juarez. There you go, Gregory oh, Juarez. Yeah. He's badass. Yes. What are your top five? You guys already know. No, I don't. A biru. Ricky Tap. <laughs> a biru. A next to a buru. Mako. Mako tattoo. Yeah, Mako. A biru sure. tattoo. Hey, is he even a tattoo anymore? I mean, this dude, he's a hustler. He has, you know, he has a lot of businesses, but I seen him post a new tattoo. Um, who else? Oh, I've Black been, I've been heavy on a spooky tattoo. Spooky. Sp- hey, spooky's like, he, what do what they call it? Like one of those guys that he's like, when you're, it's underrated. Guys. Like that dude from Upland? Beast, bro. Um, Abel or whatever? Yeah. Uh, A.B. Alvarez. But the thing is, he's dope. I like his work. He's badass. But Tattoo Spooky is just really, like, on it right now, huh? And he's just, just every killing. tattoo he kills, man. I don't know. Don't don't fucker, why don't you want to be on our podcast? <laughs> I'm calling you out right now. I don't know. If you is. ever see this. <laughs> just kidding, bro. Well, yeah, he's beast. Uh, That's, what is that, three right there? That's three. You know, there's someone missing, but you're right there, too, bro. You're in my top five. Damn, yeah. dog. Yeah. Now you're <sighs> yeah. what? Is Joe Shade, like, right next to me or something? <laughs> no. Just he's there. He's there. He's you know what? Devil. Let's give more love to this tattoo. This man. guy. What, what, what do you want? Devil, right? When do you want to get in there, bro? Appreciate that. Uh, my top five, Dev, uh, David Vega um, from Texas, uh, Gregory Juarez. That that guy's like a, a Latin American artist that's in Sweden or some shit. Thomas, Car- whatever, Thomas. Uh, Carl. Carl. Thomas Carl from uh, UK or something. Or, or, or British? Spain, I think. No, he's no? France. France oh. and... Uh, and Let's see who else is a uh, oh um Robbie Lottles from uh the East Coast. Mm. His texturing is pretty badass. And what about then, uh Reyes? Or that's just more of like You ins- know what? Ink Reyes is up there. Like I like more? I like his personality. Mm-hmm. I like how he just like he brings life like to his tattooing. Um he does amazing work, but I feel like his work is a little bit more on the simpler side, you know? So cause you have to do those cover ups, but I mean his tones and his contrast is amazing. So he's close. He's up there. But um, I don't... Who else? Yeah, maybe him. Maybe him, you know? Shout out to uh, Mr. Reyes, Inc. on YouTube. He's killing it. I think he just hit 100,000 followers, dude. That's pretty dope. Mm-hmm. He's tight. Um, but yeah. I just got 10 likes on TikTok. Huh? I just got 10 likes on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> what? Or I just flex. threw a fart. Does that, does that like... Straight flex, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now what? <laughs> Still, <I> thought... <laughs> the new day and age of tattooing. <laughs> now what, bro? Do you want to like uh, throw a party or something? You know, get the <laughs> batons and just cel- celebrate it? Look at them. Yeah, so I just get them. Don't talk to me. Emo me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll have Brian reply to them. Yeah. And then Brian's response will be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Inside joke right there. <laughs> yeah, man. So well, that's that, cool. I didn't know you had the um, top five. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some people that I look like. I said that's how I analyze it. I mm. I look back and I check their work and how would I approach this? I I refer to them. Well, ACD is probably the number five right now. And then, you know, I think um, Ink Rays is like the top ten only because, you know. Um, just different factors, you know, those styling. Mm. Um, but Jose C D has that amazing fucking the breaks and shit. Um Quinn Hernandez is also oh, a badass good. artist too. But I mean that's cool. You know, we all like it feels good to be like I look up to some people because they're doing badass work and, and it feels good that somebody looks at my work and says, Man, that's dope, you know? Um, it is always, it's always, always fall. Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> heart, heart, heart. Thank you. How much I owe you, dog, for saying that? Uh, is Zell okay or, you know, Apple Cash? Or like I, I go through your lives and I just see Romeo like you. Like, heart, 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 heart. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, let us have our moment. 
<laughs> hey, but Joe Shane, Joe Shane is under there, low key though. He yeah. he jumps on iconic and he's just like, oh, iconic <laughs> <by the way." laughs> he doesn't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> like oh somebody I caught a car I know it's not Romeo or Tony but uh, okay <laughs> here you go guys <laughs> yeah but um I don't know man that's I think that's the state of tattooing right now uh, it's exciting right yeah. and um, dude it's exciting that people are starting to talk about our studio here in uh, Fontana like we think we're not doing we're not really putting a dent in but people are hearing about our shop like the clients come in and they say you know we heard you know I, the artwork is coming out here is dope you know and as as we get our new artists more into it like johnny and you more um consistent you guys are gonna be bringing out your new fire and then once we get other artists in here is it's gonna add more to to that like brand the brand you know and just that's the same reason i got the, the client yesterday though the same thing you said because um you heard the quality and the the, the environment here was really good so he was gonna, he was choosing between us and uh, Dark Arts. Dark Arts in Montana? Yeah, but uh, uh, Dark Arts does more of a neo traditional thing and mm -hmm. he wanted more realism. So, oh, you know, coming over I mean, they have badass artists that, yeah, we should get the owner in here. The, um, their work is a lot of colorful and, like, I mean, their work is really good. Yeah, it's fucking like nice. Said, yeah. It's, but, you know, we focus on more black and gray overall. Mm -hmm. They do more color. I mean, you know, there's room for everybody, you know? Yeah. But Dark Hearts is like the the one, in our opinion, that was like had a real good established brand. They're taking it really professional. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that. I think they stepped it up once uh, they went into new management. They really stepped up. Like, I've seen photos of their shop. Yeah. It looks really nice in there. I'm going to try to get them in the podcast. Yeah. I don't know. I think his name's David or something. Yeah. So that's the name of the game, man. We got to step it up and we can't. And, and now that we're talking about this and we're like being more because we never really have this, these talks with our artists, you know, but um, part of us trying to break the mold from just being a regular tattoo shop here in Inland Empire, Fontana, California. <laughs> nine two three <laughs> nine two three seven seven <laughs> or th five five right yeah. um you know uh one, sweet one oh five one oh six um is is helping every artist here just be their best at every day and that shit's a grind you know i think what motivates us well it motivates me to be in here as well it's just like you're around people that are actually trying to learn as well the same way with you you know we'll be bouncing back ideas um or like how he like helped with the, the design. No, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, I like how <laughs> I pretty much gave him a design one time. I was like, here, bro, can I go back to finish mine? <laughs> how many likes did you get right now? Did you get another two likes? I'm kidding, bro. Go By ahead. the way, can I have that design? Because that was a dope design. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All you did was shrink it. <laughs> I already had it on there. You just shrank it, and you're like, okay. No, but is that what you mean? Like stuff like that? And no, well, yeah. I mean like stuff that? like that. Like we'll talk to each other. Like I'll talk to Tony and be like, hey. um, what do you think of this place right here? Mm -hmm. You know, we'll bounce back ideas. You're too far, so I don't talk to you. <laughs> like, I'll talk to you. Uh, Everything I learn is from you guys anyway. Yeah. So it's just so like. I, I talk to uh, Ricky. I'll be like, okay, should I add this or should I add that? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. And then we're all just trying to improve. Like, I mean, you seen Tony. You motherfucker stays. I'm just looking at people's artwork and be like, fuck, that's so so badass. So <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> How? Look at this dude, just to, so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Big T Bow. <laughs> no, but that's cool. He's getting his tan on right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I messaged him like you said, uh, you straight said, "Fuck, um, fuck my veto tat." Because <laughs> oh, he's in right, the sun. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he has it wrapped. Knowing him, yeah, 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 I know. Vito's I, another. But guy. it's the lake. <laughs> oh, Vito, Vito's the beast. Vito's another yeah. beast. Fucking. That's a branded like people see a tattoo by Vito, they recognize it instantly. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. badass. All right, I think we're done for today. I think so, huh? I gotta go take a deuce. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> gotta go paint. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> a dos? A dos? It's not. A joke. <laughs> that was a joke. Hey, wow! Well, you gotta say the sponsor because we didn't um, say it at the beginning. 
So oh, finish that's it right. Off. Yeah, I'm not used to that. So go ahead. What are you sponsored no. by? Since he started, you finish it now. What are you sponsored by today? Well, the, icon- the shop. Brought to you by Iconic. Yeah, that, oh. that thing. Yeah, don't forget to, to like and subscribe, guys. Uh, you know, we're trying to bring out a good content in here that we can help out people that are just starting in tattooing or just like tattoo content overall. Uh, give us some ideas. If you guys want want to learn about something else or a topic, give it to us. We'll give you guys our perspective of it. We're, today, we're talking about the craziness of how much um, a client can spend on tattooing, but that's pretty much a, a world record right there. And more crazier stuff's going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, let us know. Give us some comments. Today's sh- uh, podcast was sponsored by Iconic Tattoo Studio. For all your tattoo needs, please follow us on Instagram at Iconic underscore Tattoo Studio. Thank you. We out, guys. Peace.